Hey guys, I'm gonna give you 10 tips what not to do when you're in the buying process of buying a home. Uh, last week I met with my lender and this is what we discussed. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Manny, your pool home realtor. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please welcome. Uh, I make videos every single week to teach you what you need to know about buying or selling here in the Fort Myers, Florida area. Now, let's begin. Hello guys, this is Manny with Remax Realty Team. I'm over here with... This is Mario Diarmas with PRMG and Cape Coral. All right, today we're gonna be talking about a couple of things about the mortgage process. So Mario, can you walk us through uh, what we're gonna be talking about today? Yeah, um, we're going to go over uh, 10 things you should avoid um, doing either before applying for a mortgage or while in the mortgage process itself. So we're going to start off with the uh, number one of the do not. So do not buy a big ticket item, a car, a boat, or an expensive piece of furniture. Oh, okay. So what that means is that, hey, if I bought a boat, $100,000, I'm paying now, you know, $3,000. Uh, that's going to throw out some of my numbers out, right? My buying power and stuff like that. Yeah, correct. So by, by buying that boat, um, you're adding on another expense monthly, which is a liability to your credit. So whatever that monthly payment is for the boat could affect your, you know, your debt ratios. And by tacking on that new uh, debt, it can also affect your credit score. All right, number one, don't buy expensive items. Or don't buy anything at all onto your clothes. So number two, do not quit or switch your job. Oh, that's really important. That's really important. Um, why that is really important to the lending partners? Um, like, it's it's. I mean, it's important for for starters, uh, job stability. Um, okay. They don't, you know, it's not good if you've jumped around from six or seven jobs. You know, that doesn't look good to to underwriters, um, to the lender, basically. Um, you want to have uh, stability in, in your job and stability in income. Uh, there could be many things that come up. Example: someone that was working as a W-2 employee, a wage earner, and jumped to 1099 income, which is considered self-employment, where the person could add on um, expenses and then the net income changes. Mm. So lenders require a two-year history most of the time when it comes to that. So number three, uh, do not open or close any lines of credit unless instructed by your lender. If you close a credit account, that actually hurts your credit score. So if you're tired of debt and you just want to pay it off, pay it off. Um, ideally, you want to pay it down. You don't want to pay it down to zero. You want to pay it down to less than 30% of the credit limit. So if you have a $1,000 credit limit, you could pay it down to $300 and that's what's going to help you the best. Just do not close the account. Pay it down and leave it open. So number four is pay bills late. Um, try to stay on time with all your bills because... Uh, one 30 day late payment on the credit report takes you take a huge hit on your mm -hmm. credit score and in all the worst I mean you could do a uh, um, Schedule your payment monthly. So that never happened. Yeah, set up automatic um, payments automatic. Um, Just uh, you know, I do it kind of old-school myself um, I have my spreadsheet with what date the payments are due and I do have some automatic payments myself um, There's others that I go in when I know yeah, it's exactly. time or before and make those payments. Uh -huh. So number five, uh, don't ignore questions from your lender or a real estate agent. Yeah, with this, uh, ignoring the questions from, from the lender or from the real estate agent uh, could hurt you in such a catastrophic way. Uh, it really can. Um, there, you know, don't hold anything back. Um, it's think that you're in court and you're taking oath and tell us the truth and nothing but the yeah. truth. Yeah. Uh, number six, what we got over there? So number six, let someone run a credit check on you. Uh, basically, um, if someone, if you're during the mortgage process, well, every time they pull your credit, it usually affects your score. Um, during the mortgage process, it's huge because every lender, either before or while you're, dur you're in currently, uh, like in the mortgage process itself, that could drop your score. And when the lenders do the check right before closing, the credit check right before closing, and your score drops or things change, you took on a big debt without yeah. telling the lender, that could cause an issue and possibly cost you not to be able to close. To get the house. Hey, I have, sir, I have heard um, some people saying, hey, at the, at the beginning, you could do as many as pool as possible. Uh, you know, you should shop around 
how did that did that work in that aspect or can you do you know a couple of pulls in different um, lending institutions uh, to check out your credit yeah well, so, what's that myth about that because I heard a lot of that yeah some of them say yes some of them say no no definitely you can definitely shop around with lenders so if you're if they're pulling your credit uh, let's say you apply for a mortgage you have 14 days for other lenders um, to pull your credit and it doesn't affect your score. So 14 days from the day of the first credit pull. So definitely shop around yeah. for lenders. Okay. So number seven is don't make large deposits to your accounts outside of your paycheck. Oh, that's, that's really important. Yeah. Uh, you know, bank doesn't want to be, doesn't want to see that big chunk, you know, a $10,000 deposit because they want to know where that bank, uh, where that money came from, right? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, basically how they do it is that Let's say you make normally four thousand dollars a month, and that's always shown in your bank statements. Your direct deposits show four thousand, and all of a sudden you made a deposit for ten thousand. So they're gonna want to know where that came from. So unless it was like a gift from a family member or something like that, that it could be explained easily, you don't want to make large deposits. Any deposit outside of the range. So if you make four thousand dollars a month of direct deposits from your employment that go into that account. Any deposit over $2,000, which is half of what yeah. you normally make, is going to be questioned. Mm -hmm. So number eight is do not co-sign a loan with anyone. Okay. Well, once again, that would, even though you sign in, and this is self-planetary, once you sign in for another loan, that debt is still yours. Right? Exactly. I, yeah. You know. So uh, a lot of people, um, just out of the, you know, their good grace, uh, they want to help out a family member. They yeah. co-sign a car for them. Well, that loan is right off the bat is just as much theirs as it is yours. Yeah. The only way to not count, let's say a car payment that you co-sign for someone is to have a 12 month payment history from the person that you co-signed with from their bank account. Your name cannot be on their bank account and show a 12 month payment history that they've been making those payments on that account on that account. <clears throat> correct. Well, so I mean, it is doable just not recently, you know, two or three months. Exactly. It has to be at least 12 months. However, it does affect your credit score because you still took on a new debt. So number nine is change bank accounts. Oh, I mean, I, I mean, if, if I do that between, you know, a year, can I do that between a year or if I mean, if it's a year back, yeah, that's fine. It's, it's basically don't switch bank accounts while you're getting ready to make an offer on a house and go under contract and your loan is about to be underwritten. You do not want to be changing bank accounts. During and why that is that? Period. Any reason behind of it? Um, it's, it's, you know, it could be a, a suspicion. I mean, you could do it, but there just has to be a valid reason. Example, if they, if someone used your account and, and it wasn't you and, and there was, you know, proof of that, um, then that would be okay. Uh, but ideally they, they want to see, again, it comes to stability that you have the same bank account where you've always been getting your deposits. You've always been paying your your bills from so unless something really bad happened that someone got a hold of your account information and started using using it uh, you know for like fraud a fraudulent yeah. activity then you should stick with the same bank account so number 10 is don't take out any payday loans mm, payday loans why that i never heard about that so payday loans uh if you're short on cash and you have bills to pay and you go to a payday loan store and they front you your salary uh, you basically provide them your pay stubs um mm and they front you your salary and then you have to pay it back with interest when you do get paid. Uh, the reason that that doesn't look good is that if right now you have not, you don't own a home yet and you're trying to get a home, you're applying for a mortgage, that's, uh, that's an issue with, with, with what's called the ability to repay. Okay. So if you can't pay your bills as is now, you know, yeah. it doesn't look good yeah. if you're trying to get a mortgage. So don't take out any pay loan uh, or, I mean, if you ever need to do that, then you gotta kind of like rethink about, hey, if this is the right time for us to purchase a home or exactly. not. Exactly, correct. I'm in the Southwest Florida area. Uh, I'm Manny with Remax Realty Team. I'm Mario with PRMG and Cape Corp. So hey, have a wonderful day, and then if you guys need anything in this area, just let us know. Thank you. Thank have you guys. Day. Thanks.